In this podcast, we will discuss ultrasound of the liver. We will focus on hepatic steatosis and hepatic cirrhosis and how to recognize and describe the common findings associated with these two conditions. Breaking ultrasound of the liver down into its most basic components, you are looking for three main findings. One, the echogenicity of the liver or how bright the liver is. Two, the texture of the liver and whether or not the texture is homogenous or coarse Three, you're looking at the surface of the liver to see if you can detect any nodularity of the liver, which would be abnormal and indicative of cirrhosis. Hepatic steatosis is accumulation of fat or lipid within the liver and specifically within the hepatocytes. There's both non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but also alcohol abuse or heavy use will cause fatty liver disease. When we are using ultrasound to try to detect hepatic steatosis, we're specifically trying to determine if the echogenicity of the liver is increased. And we have two internal references to compare the liver to. One, the periportal fat, and two, the echogenicity of the kidney. Here are two examples, one of a normal patient and then two examples of patients with severe steatosis. In the examples on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see this bright rim of echogenicity surrounding the portal veins. That is periportal fat, and in a normal liver, you should see the portal veins surrounded by periportal fat. In patients with hepatic steatosis, that rim of hyperechogenicity or rim of fat is no longer visible because the liver has become so fatty that it obscures the periportal fat. And you can see two examples on the right hand side of your screen where arrows point to the portal veins and we do not see that characteristic periportal fat. So we can be very confident that there is hepatic steatosis in both of these cases. We can also use the kidney's echogenicity as an internal reference. The kidney and liver should have similar echogenicity or the kidney should just be slightly darker than the liver. When the liver becomes steatotic, it becomes increased in echogenicity and the kidney will appear very dark or hypoechoic relative to the hyperechoic liver. Now let's switch gears and look at cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is the development of fibrosis in the liver, and oftentimes fibrosis in the liver is only apparent on ultrasound once it becomes very severe, or once it is truly developed into cirrhosis, and not just early stage fibrosis. We are looking for two different signs. One, coarsening of the echo texture. So when the liver becomes fibrotic, the fibrosis creates a heterogeneous or coarse appearance to the liver parenchyma. The other finding we're looking for is surface nodularity. The normal liver should have a nice smooth surface and in the setting of cirrhosis, the liver surface will become irregular or nodular. Here are examples from four different patients. On the left-hand side, we have two normal livers in which the liver parenchyma is very homogenous. The only areas where there is texture to the liver are where the vessels are, and those vessels provide normal texture, but the, the actual tissue of the liver is very smooth and homogenous. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see examples of two livers with cirrhosis. And unlike the livers on the left, the livers on the right have more texture to them and they're more coarse. And that coarse appearance is due to the fibrosis within the liver. There is a wide spectrum of normal and abnormal. And I think that being able to detect a coarse liver, unless it's an extremely coarse liver, can be difficult. 
One thing that you can rely on with more certainty, however, is nodularity of the liver surface. A normal liver should have a very smooth surface. On the right-hand side of your screen, you have examples from two patients with coarsened livers, but also nodular liver surfaces. And I highlight that nodularity with a line here and a line here. And now I'll remove the line and let you look back at those livers. And you can see the sort of undulating contour of the liver. And you can compare that to the two examples on the left-hand side of your screen, which have a nice smooth liver surface. When ascites is present, oftentimes nodularity is accentuated. I've presented two cases. One person on the left has ascites, but does not have cirrhosis. And you can see that nice smooth contour to the liver. And you compare that to the person on the right who has ascites and a very irregular or nodular liver. And when we see this nodularity, we can have a high degree of confidence that the patient has underlying cirrhosis. So, a normal liver should have a homogeneous tissue or homogeneous liver parenchyma, and it should be similar in echogenicity to the kidney, and you should be able to see distinct rims of periportal fat along the portal veins. When there is steatosis, the echogenicity of the liver increases relative to the kidney, and we lose the distinct rim of periportal fat. As fibrosis develops, the liver parenchyma gets coarse or more heterogeneous, and then once cirrhosis has developed, we can often detect nodularity to the liver surface, giving us a high degree of confidence of underlying liver fibrosis and cirrhosis.